I've been reading about how athletes train, especially those who have to put in a lot of hours repeating things, like swimmers who have to do stroke after stroke after stroke, or basketball players who have to shoot hoops many, many times. And even though they all have in common the fact that they have to do many hours, that's not what makes them special, the ones who are special. They think about what they're doing. They pay attention to what they're doing. Of course, this falls into the Buddhist principle that the drama is nourished by commitment and reflection. You make up your mind, you're going to stick with this. And you do your best, and then you observe your best to see what's not good enough. If you just go through the motions, there's not much to observe, not much to learn. But you have to actively try to breathe, say, in a way that's really good. It gives you something to aim for. What would a sense of really comfortable breath be right now? Sometimes the body seems very cooperative. The breathing feels natural, feels easy. Other times it's not, and it seems like the more you try to manipulate the breath, the worse it gets. So in a case like that, you say, well, just let the body breathe on its own. You're not going to help it. And there'll be a brief moment where Nothing happens. And then something will kick in. And after a while, the body will settle down again. And so you notice that. And ask yourself, why? These general principles of commitment and reflection can be further separated out into the four bases for success. One, there has to be the desire, and then there has to be the effort or persistence, where you just stick with it, you persevere, and then you are intent on what you're doing, pay careful attention to what you're doing, and then you think about it. This is how you achieve success in any activity. In Thailand, they like to take these bases for success and apply them all to all kinds of activities. I was reading a piece recently where someone had noticed that in the repair room for the Thai Air Force, where they repair helicopters and planes, there's a big sign, the four bases for success in repairing helicopters and airplanes. And that was the list from the Buddha. I don't think the Buddha had that in mind when he set out his four principles, but hey, there it can be applied. And this is how you stick with something and make it work. You really have to remind yourself that it is important to get the mind to be trained. And when you think about sticking with this and wondering how long it's going to take, you have to remind yourself also that you don't know how much longer you're going to live. So when it seems like a long prospect for meditating day after day after day, you may not have those days. That's one way of reminding yourself to pay attention right now. Focus on what you're doing right now. Do it right now. With a sense that you're lucky to have the opportunity right now. Because you don't know when the, the big curtain is going to fall. So you focus very much on the details right now. This is where the intent comes in. You can ask yourself, the mind has a tendency to slip off. At what part of the breath cycle does that happen? In the beginning of the in-breath, the end of the in-breath, between the breaths, on the out-breath? One thing you may notice is that the range of your awareness when you're trying to develop a whole body awareness does tend to shrink on the out-breath. So if you notice that that's what's actually happening, okay, you can try to counteract it. That means you have to pay very careful attention to each out-breath. Make sure you don't slip into your old habits. 
So you break things down into little steps like this. Focus on the details. Don't focus on the long stretch of time that this practice is going to take. Because in addition to the fact that this lifetime may be very short and you don't know, you also have to realize that if you don't practice the alternative path, the path of samsara wandering on, around, is very, very long. It's been going on for many, many universes. And how many more universes do you want to go through? So the path to awakening is actually a lot shorter. And it's a good path. You can encourage yourself this way, too. You're not being asked to do anything that's dishonorable, anything that's harmful, anything that's going to take advantage of other people. And ask all of your, for all of your good qualities. And you have some ungood qualities to say, well, we don't want to be pushed out of the way. And they'll get in the way. But you have to ask yourself, do you really want to identify with those? You have the choice. This is why the Buddha talks about eye-making and my-making. The self as an activity rather than as a thing to either exist or not exist. It's an activity you're doing. So you have the choice. Things come up in the mind. Do you want to identify with them, or do you want to say, well, that's just old karma. I don't need to touch that. I can let it go. When you realize you have the choice, then becomes another issue that you can investigate, take an interest in. What are the steps by which the mind decides it's going to identify with something? And how is it going to use its sense of self and its sense of self-responsibility to create new perceptions that make it easier to stick with the path? So there are a lot of details you can look into, from how you breathe, how you talk to yourself, the perceptions you hold in mind. There are a lot of things to adjust. And if you pay attention to the details, you get focused on the present moment. And each moment becomes a useful part of the practice, rather than something you're simply going to get through. How many times you've been sitting here saying, well, I'll put up with this for an hour, and then when the hour's done, I'll go and let my mind wander as it likes. When you start thinking about the hour, then the moments don't get treated with the proper respect, proper interest. And they get thrown away. This is one of the tricks of perseverance. Instead of thinking about how long this is going to be, you think about right now, each step one at a time. The other trick to perseverance is not to focus on the hard parts, it's to focus on your sources of strength inside. starting with the breath, but also with your determination that you really want to do something well. And whatever inner strengths or inner voices that will help with that quest, you want to encourage them. They're there. The potentials are there. Just make sure you don't kill them. Years back, one of my students called up one evening. He had a problem with marijuana. He says, Tony John, I've got some weed in my little bag in my hand. And you're going to tell me how not to smoke it. I said, well, there must be some member of your inner committee that doesn't want to smoke it. Otherwise, you wouldn't have called me up. He said, I've killed that member of the committee. That's one thing you have to not do. Learn how to recognize the good members of your committee. Nourish them. Because they are there for your own well-being. So don't treat them as somebody from outside imposing something on you. This is one of the problems with learning to discipline yourself, which is a part of perseverance. 
You decide you're going to do this every day, and then something inside you has to keep you true to that determination. So don't see that something as something alien. It's a choice you made for your own good. It's not like you're fighting using reason against your desires. You're using one desire against other desires. So keep reminding yourself, and this is part of the motivation, part of the first base for success, why you would desire to do this. There are reasons, good reasons. Apparently in ancient philosophy there was this discussion whether the desires had reasons or not, whether they were just sort of brute force. And the argument came down to, well, if the desires were just brute force, how could, how could reason have any role in getting some control over them? They have to have their reasons, and you have to see where their reasons are really bad, and they're actually bad for you and they actually hate you. When you see your unskillful desires as having malicious reasons for not wanting you to succeed, that's when you can begin to separate yourself from them. And again, I apply this lesson of, is this something I want to make myself, or do I want to make it, make it other, not self? You have the choice. So as you stick with us, remind yourself, the basis for success have lots of implications. We talk about desires, not just random desires coming up. You have an overriding desire to gain some freedom, to stop causing yourself all the misery you're causing yourself. And that's a desire that you really ought to cherish, and then you apply that. The definition of right, right effort, which is basically what persistence is, is that you generate the desire to abandon unskillful qualities and to develop skillful qualities. So desire is not just one item and then followed by persistence. Desire is part of the persistence. You want to keep nourishing it. There's a sutta where, where King has been to see different teachers in the time of the Buddha. And he finally comes to see the Buddha after having asked questions of all the big teachers of the day. And he describes first what they told him. And all, all too often it's just a description of the universe. The universe is like this, it's like that. And the description tends to come down to the fact that human effort has no meaning at all in a universe like that. Like the materialistic universe, everything is governed by atoms. Everything is governed by physical forces. There's no meaning to anything. That's the kind of teaching that you just listen to and you decide, do I agree or do I not agree? Whereas the Buddhist teaching is very different. He, he teaches about the power of human action and how you can train your mind so that you don't have to suffer. And so his teaching is not one you simply either agree with or not agree with. It's one when you say, well, let's give it a try. And then you have to learn how to encourage yourself on the path. Look at the way the Buddha himself would teach. There are four verbs they use to describe his teachings. Only one is instruct. The rest, the other three are urge, rouse, and encourage. Pep talks. So learn how to urge yourself to practice. Learn how to rouse yourself to practice. Encourage yourself to practice. And then pay careful, careful attention to what you're doing. Watch each breath, what you might learn from that breath. And then over time you build up a range of skills. This is another lesson in this book on practicing, is that the people who master a skill have a mental map of what the possibilities are, and a map of what's going on so they can understand when something's going right, when something's going wrong. This is why we have the Dharma. And the Buddhist teaching is on 
the three ways in which you fabricate your experience. I can help you break down any problem in your meditation. Is it in the way you breathe? Is it in the way you talk to yourself? Is it in the perceptions you hold in mind? The feelings you focus on? These categories are not just there to memorize, they're there to raise some questions to alert you to what some of the issues might be, so you can make a checklist. And it's in this way that your motivation can stay alive as you're paying careful attention, because each breath has something to teach you. Each moment when the mind is about to leave the breath has something to teach you. You ask yourself, why would it do that? What are the steps? And what are the steps to realizing, whoops, I've left. How do I come back? Try to figure out where in this process you tend to be blind. And then make up your mind that you're not going to let that moment of passing out happen again. Because that's what is what happens. The mind goes blank for a minute, Then when it comes to, it's in a different world. There was a science fiction story one time that was based on this principle, in which the spacecraft moved not because they had any fuel, but because they changed their frame of reference. In other words, they acted just like your mind. If their frame of reference was here on Earth, they would stay on Earth. If it was the sun, you're suddenly zipping off in the opposite direction in which the Earth is moving around the Sun. It was the center of the galaxy, and they'd zip off really fast, very, very far. And the plot of the story revolved around the fact that the people in this spacecraft would pass out during that change in the frame of reference, and some would recover faster than others. That's what happens with your mind. You're going to switch your frame of reference from the breath to something else. There's a moment of passing out. So you're going to ask yourself, well, what, what is that moment? How does that happen? And how is it plotted and planned beforehand? Which parts of the mind are doing this? And am I totally unaware of what they're doing? Or are there hints here and there? So a lot of details you can get fascinated by. The breath is fascinating. The mind is even more fascinating. And you can begin to make a mental map of the steps by which the mind creates a thought and then runs with it. And where in there it hides everything from itself. That's in developing that mental map that you get more and more confident about what you're doing. But all these principles basically boil down to having the desire, the persistence, the intent, and using your powers of analysis. That's how you can stick with the practice and see that it really is making progress. You may not know how soon your awakening is going to be. That's one thing the Buddha says, don't try to anticipate when it's going to happen. But you can measure the fact that you're getting better at catching yourself as you slip off from the breath, or getting better at figuring out when a breath, a way of breathing is uncomfortable, how you can change it. There are specific skills you can work on. So as you focus on the specifics, you find that they help you stick with the practice over the long run. And they really can take you to some place you've never been to before.